Welcome to this week's edition of The Mediator with me, your host, Brian West, here to give you the top eight headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Now, as usual, I give you the top eight local headlines and developing news stories that made it first, followed by a movie clip, a skit, a trailer, or something that's going on in the community, or maybe some pictures. And then I'll give you the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it. So let's just no time, folks. It's about that time. Let's get to it. Story number one. Mixed feelings about the local arts, arts community. The local arts community will be seeing another transition. The Youngstown Playhouse is preparing for another management change. Now, in a front page Vindicator article published February 9th, the, 9th, the Playhouse Board of Directors approved an agreement to have the Henry H. Stambaugh Auditorium Association handle operations. Now, overall, there are still Still mixed feelings still haunting the local arts community and most of it has to do with structure budgets the support system the pay scale uh, and the fact that there's a new generation coming around and they're not as motivated so there's something going on with that or they may want to see diversity and you have COVID-19 policies put in place uh, to prevent the spread of the virus so these are all factors weighing in it's story number one that's why story number one made it this week. story number two is the valley tapped out with the snow the snow removal cost added up to about one hundred forty six thousand seven hundred and thirteen dollars and twenty eight cents it almost got i think it was around to about seventy two thousand almost i think it was about seventy two thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollars so it was around the ranges right there that's a lot of money uh that was for january's the january 16th and 17th uh snowstorm so the 100 was probably for the 16th and the 72,000 was probably for the 17th and uh, then it got up to $73,715.90 in February for February 3rd snowstorm so that's a lot of money being dished out now the valley is just about tapped out when it comes to snow and most residents and officials probably will be looking forward to the spring and summer seasons that are just around the corner because of all the snow that's why story number two made it in the story number three the next generation has something to say about how COVID-19 is being handled locally now cases are on the decline but the way things that things are being handled has the next generation talking and uh, they they feel like they need some say in this now the old school is roughing it out and watching the budgets while the new school is screaming for some type of stability they're tired of all the uncertainty now there's a lot of confusion in this story because there are two local angles you have the kids some kids like remote learning while others may want to be in school and uh, some people are saying why are they not in school when they're already getting in fights and doing things that they shouldn't be doing anyway so uh but, but that's just things that make sense but everybody's watching their health now some kids like being vaccinated while other kids may not prefer not to be so there's a lot of going on in this story now overall the voices in this story are starting to speak up and it's causing more stories to emerge some good and some bad mainly bad that's why story number three it's so controversial. That's so why I made it. This week. Story number four. Safety is once again in the local news. This is big. Safety is big right now. People are getting hurt. Fires are breaking out. And public workers are getting caught in the middle. Safety is making major headlines and it's costing a lot of money. The more EMS workers stay busy, the more these stories will continue to make headlines. Now, not only are people getting hurt, but people are literally dying in car accidents also. Highway Ways, build, building fires, airplanes, work, and they're getting hurt at work. Now, the list of safety concerns is, is keeping the story alive. Now, this story made it in because this is after multiple local accidents have made headlines in less than two weeks. One accident killed a PA man after his SUV went, well, an SUV went 
airborne over a bridge overpass a overpass and crash landed on the street now this fatal i-80 crash in liberty made front page news february 12th that's why story number four is so big safety is big story number five local communities are trying to look towards the future the city of struthers is looking towards the future and like other surrounding communities is trying the city is trying to prepare for that just that the future and to get its residents ready to upgrades and buildings and all types of stuff now a lot of local communities have just uh they've come to accept aid assistance and they're using that assistance to meet the needs of their local community and at the moment there never seems to be enough money that the cities and these local communities that could need to do things now grant writers are always busy and city officials are moving forward with plans to beautify their territories for the people uh, things that need to be upgraded like walk walk right ways and all types of stuff you know bike trails you now businesses are no different because many still need access to cash and city lenders are taking notice so they're trying to find a way to get these businesses cash now this is yet another story that has to stay is uh, that has been staying as local circulation because everybody needs money especially in these hard times that's why story number five made it this week big big hell story number six the local political fight may have just begun post trump era morgan harper is yet another obstacle for uh, congressman tim ryan who has served for uh, the 13th di the 13th district for over 20 years as congressman and uh now the fellow democrat is calling the congressman currently running for well currently running to fill the senate seat that's going to be vacated by senator rob portman she is calling ryan a career politician and even took shots at his stance on uh joe manchin's decision to shoot down Biden's infrastructure bill. Now, Tim Ryan has constantly been on defense uh, from just about all angles, and, uh, and uh, he's been on defense about his record. But he continues to face criticism for just about from just about every direction, not just uh, Miss uh, Harper, who is running for the, uh, the seat also. So that's why story number six almost made it to the top two, because as things get heated up, we could be seeing a, we will, will be seeing a changing of the guard and. Tim wants to be that uh, that uh, that candidate, so we'll see how this turns out because that Senate seat uh, is big in Ohio. That's a big seat, so we'll see how. That's why story number six almost made it to the top two this week. Story number seven in the top two local headlines and developing news stories that made it this week for you folks to keep you informed. That's all it's for. Nothing else. Nothing. There's no gimmicks here. I'm only doing this to keep you informed. So uh, show me some love. Be grateful. Sing a song with me. Give me something to believe in, baby. There could be miracles when you believe. And that's what I'm doing. I'm believing that I can keep you informed and get you on top of your game. This may be the change in your day, baby. Mediation. Whew. And somebody's got to do it. Somebody, baby. <laughs> Story number seven. Taking a lot. Well, uh, taking a lot. Well, taking a look, not a lot, I'm stumbling on my words, thinking about you, <laughs> trying to keep you informed. Taking a look at local infrastructure and the plans for the future, folks. They have some, uh, uh, they said about $4.5 million in American Rescue Plan funds is set to pay for uh, more than a dozen uh, county sewer and bridge projects. I think the money is set to repair sewers in Austintown, Poland, New Springfield, Coitsville, Ellsworth, Poland Village, and I think 1.5 million will be used for Struthers, Jackson Township, uh, Goshen, and Youngstown. So that's good, and that's why you're starting to see improvement. That's why story number seven made it to the top two this week because uh, we need these investments, and that's why they made it this week. Infrastructure is big right now, and uh, Biden will be stepping in town, and uh, we just saw the bridge collapse in PA. So this is why this is a big story. It almost made it to the top this week. Big B hell. Story number eight in the top local headline and developing news story that made it this week for you folks i got dressed up ran in here just to keep you informed and i do this show just for you looking over 200 or more stories to keep you informed so be grateful folks and uh, let's get to this top story what people feel about the local community story number eight what people feel about the local community and why this is important lately there has been a lot of news in circulation about the valley especially youngstown this involves crime resources school roads uh jobs you know these topics have a lot of city people talking people want a return on their investment they want to be certain about the future and they want access to quality as a secure future at that now the more the that this story uh 
about crime, the more the stories about crime and violence stay in circulation, these headlines will continue to haunt the local market. Now, uh, local patrons are trying to remain optimistic, but local people are still uh, hungry for progress. And uh, let's hope that uh, we can start to revitalize, repair, and restructure people's lives, especially all the damage that's been done when you talk about crime. And uh, story number eight is a big, big headline because some people have been to other places and they know that uh, the uh, the quality of living around here is cheap. There's something to do, and people are trying. So uh, that's why story number eight made it to the top this week because uh, more people are trying to think optimistic and they're trying to think positive about the future. And that's why this story. Uh, crept in this week folks well those are our top eight local headlines in developing news stories that made this week uh, i'll be right back with the top eight international headlines in developing news stories so don't go anywhere you're the media with me brown west i'll be right back hmm what does method 8 inc.com media center have that i need small prints event consulting photography business consulting technical consulting entertainment consulting fundraising advice event videography movies news publishing media books entertainment acting broadcasting public relations access to the visual and performing arts ink and black ink refills audio recording graphic design theater minor computer and cell phone repair and they're located at 5648 market street in boardman ohio from 10 a.m until 6 p.m every monday through friday the list goes on and on method 8 inc.com buy stuff Watch stuff or read stuff. Oh, yeah. And yes, we are chipmunks. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top eight international headlines in developing news stories that made it this week. I got a call from a buddy of mine, and uh, he was uh, talking about, uh, we were talking about presidents, and uh, he was messing around he said brian i think you should run for president and i said man you must be out of your mind and uh, he says uh you'd probably be a good president brian you really should think about it you know uh we don't we don't you don't have much time in this life and i, I said no 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 and I, the thought came across my mind how 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 i an inspirational person who's always optimistic could be president you know it, it'd probably be i was thinking about my slogan my slogan would probably be something like uh be thankful uh uh uh, be grateful, be kind, uh, be optimistic, uh, vote for me, smile every day. They probably look at me like I'm crazy because because every day would be a positive day in the White House. Uh, and I like to listen to inspirational music, you know, at my campaign. They'd probably be gospel music and uh, find your place of worship. Everybody from uh, from every religion would be coming and worshiping in front of the White House lawn. There probably wouldn't be too much war. Uh, uh, people, I'd probably convince people to to, to get a job by being uh, by following the gospels, and who knows how it would be. But the thought is there, you know. Uh, and uh, after he told me that, I I, I, I said, no, I couldn't be president because I'm, I'm too inspirational. You know, I don't think people like to be inspired. You know, every every country that be uh, trying to go to war with, they probably be listening. To, uh, They'd probably be chiming in, and I'd probably be lifting them up and say, "It'll be all right, you know. We'll come over there, and uh, we'll get it done." But you got to pay us, <laughs> and then that's when everybody would get upset when um, when they're all on the front lawn and and uh, looking at me. Oh, he's a great man, and then that's when I'd give them the bill. It's time to pay up. <laughs> And they'd probably take me out but it's the thought it's the thought that counts folks <laughs> let's get to it folks uh story number one uh what does mental health have to do with love and this is a big question because uh people would do anything for love what they do do for love you've tried everything after valentine's day folks there's there's lonely day there's a lot of lonely people out there dating lines are chatting up baby people are doing things on dating lines on online dating sites now one article homing in on the lonely vibes that are causing mental health problems across america has made some headlines love is a big factor in mental health awareness and uh and it was worth a shot. It's uh, it's always worth a shot when you're uh, so when you see 
the more the more that people are not choosing to be in love and they're choosing to be single to try to attempt to stay sane so this story was worth a shot and that's why i made it this week because most people just don't want to be tied down anymore i mean when you have freedom you have access to everything especially in this country uh, why be married? You know, you could do whatever you want to do, watch whatever you want to watch. That's why story number one is so important because the love factor is playing a big factor in our mental health. Big, big help. Story number two. What can we learn from freedom and black history this Black History Month? All right, folks, now it may be time to assess the Black Lives Matter and other movements that have been taking place across the country. Now, this Black History Month, a lot is being learned every day as people fight for rights that uh, years ago were already put in place. So uh, some people are wondering what are they fighting for. Now, in this battle, there seems to be more confusion than anything else. And most black people and white people still want more information on what has caused the continued mass circulation of racial stories that have really not done much but caused more division and confusion. Now, the political infighting is also making headlines because the frustration is spreading. Now, and a lot of ill-informed people have found themselves in the middle of a movement that has a lot of people wondering, why are these kids out in the middle of the street protesting? Young kids. Now, it, 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 there's some questions that come along in this, in this story, like what did uh, anybody do wrong? That's one question. Or is it anybody's fault? That's another question. Or well, you may say my, or is it, or what did I do wrong? Now, there's another question: Is is there something that I or you or we don't know that everybody else is somebody else does know? So that's another question. The, the biggest factor surrounding the story is the fact that it has a lot to do with the history of slavery. And a huge load of things that people have been co complaining about for years that they feel like hasn't been solved, especially in the inner city uh, black or minority communities, as they would call it in America. Story number three, understanding COVID-19 and what we're learning every day. Now, COVID-19 has been a thorn in the side of progress. Now, the argument is how do we move on with so much going on in this ongoing story? COVID-19 has dominated mainstream news because everyone is being dragged in and, 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 and the uncertainty is creating a lot of fear. So everybody's being dra dragged into this COVID-19 black hole. I mean, if you don't want to get vaccinated, people are arguing that you should. Young people are fighting with old people. So it's, 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 this is a very complicated story. Now, the data is showing that most people are moving on from this uh, trying to move on. Lockdowns and shutdowns that were put in, that were supposed to contain the spread have only seemed to cause more problems and confusion, especially financially for some people. Now, children outside of school continue to get in trouble even in limited lockdowns kids found ways to gather so they're still even with all this stuff with the mask kids just don't know what is going on you got to think this is these are children now workroom floors have been battling they've been at battle having battles also because they've been escalated because people feel that there is in, is injustice in this fight for their what they feel they god given right some people will say years ago people get vaccinated why is this such a problem now so this is a lot there's a lot of seesaw battling going on in this story now every day there are so there are so many breaking news stories coming out about the lasting effects of this virus and there's another headline. 3,000 New York City staff members have reportedly lost their jobs over vaccine rules, according to a BBC News report. Now, this one story is causing a lot of concerns because these workers have been on unpaid leave. And when you mess with people's money, you're asking for trouble, for trouble, especially if they've been on the job for a long time. Now, one BBC headline also asks is why China's COVID-19 deaths are so much lower than the United States. So that's why story number three made it this week. Understanding COVID-19 and what we're learning every day. Big, big help. Story number four. What is the American consumer looking for? Cheap, affordable, within budget, cost effective. These are all of the things that the American consumer is looking for. 
or well, cause if you want to say consumers are looking for it. But if inflation is changing that, folks, if costs keep rising, people will continue to conserve. And as more people keep getting dragged into these consumer supply and demand problems, this story will stay alive and in the headlines. Our story number four made it in this week, folks. Well, those are our top four international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. I'll be right back with the top, top four. So don't go anywhere. You're the media. Me, Brian West. I'll be right back. If you want to check out the stories that almost made it in or did make it in, go to our Twitter feed on our website. Check out everything. All of the sources are there. If you go to the website, it's M E T H O D, the number eight, INC.com. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top four, top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that made this week. Folks, we are we are approaching was Veterans was President's Day. And uh, this is a very unsellable. I don't think too many people know about this holiday, but uh, but it's it's, uh, it's supposed to celebrate the, the birthday of the first president and the president's day. A lot of people do not celebrate it, but it is an important holiday. Uh I always say, uh, what would it be like if uh, more veterans were presidents? You know, because especially like somebody like a veteran like myself, uh, I, I don't get to see too many fancy things. So I'd probably be in the White House quite a bit looking around, taking pictures and just be grateful just to have a place to stay because there's a lot of veterans who do not have a place to stay. And uh, knowing, some, knowing a guy like me, there'd probably be a lot of veterans uh, living in the White House. And we'd probably be having barbecues on the White House lawn. I'd probably put a track around the building we get in shape. I'd have a few Marines in there, a few Navy vets, a few Army guys, Coast Guard. We'd probably be running laps. I mean, it'd probably be a different different state of thinking, but uh, that's just the way I think. And my cousin told me, he said, Brian, everybody doesn't think like you. So this President's Day, uh, I guess I will give a shout out. It's a very, very, very uh, uncommon holiday that they've uh, decided to make up. So happy President's Day. And uh, uh, it's a tough job to do, especially when you got people always trying to tell you how to do things and what to do. And if they're going to shoot you and take you out. But uh, we just got to be grateful. We got a country. So uh, that's why President's Day is so big. But let's get to the stories, folks. Let's get to it. <laughs> uh, I try to uh, make everything all right. But uh well, somebody's got to send you into battle. I don't know if you could be uh, be grateful for that, but uh, happy President's Day. How about that? Story number five. Story number five. Fossil fuels and climate change. Fossil fuels and climate change stories are staying in the headlines, folks. And it's clear that people being, uh, that human beings would be very, very uncomfortable if we were not, if they were not for fossil fuels. I mean, we would have gas, all this stuff. So this story is staying alive. Some headlines are resurfacing about the stagnant coal industry and where banks are channeling in energy money. Now, nuclear energy is also making headlines. The biggest headline that got the story in is the mega drought now hitting the southwestern U.S. Now, this is, it is causing the driest conditions in over 100 and well 1200 years now the the debate is if humans or 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 if we're causing climate change this is what the biggest debate about or is it just the planet planet earth Earth's changing weather patterns. Now, history books do talk about droughts, famine, and weather changes, so this could just be one other another talking point fueling this debate. That's why story number five made it this week. Big me hell. Story number six: the globalist mindset and what does America have to do with it? Now, some politicians are quietly entering the Russian-Ukraine debate. Bernie Sanders says that we should be, we should put ourselves in Russia's position. Vladimir Putin, because of our stance in trying to get Putin to back down. So he said we mainly should pretty much be worried about ourselves. Now, it is clear that Bernie Sanders is looking at the matter from a more logical standpoint. He is focused on uh, the what would you do if factor. Now, like what would you do if a part of your land and in your country became infiltrated with countries who don't share the same common interests. So uh, it basically says stay out of other people's business. Now, a lot of Americans do not agree with this global globalist mindset and a lot of Americans do not agree with Bernie Sanders but this seems to be what has people concerned with the Biden agenda period now latest headlines show that what every Putin what, what, what that whatever Putin is preparing for he has been gathering his chips for a long time to plead his case so whatever he's preparing for it's been a long time coming now this is a well thought out plan by Putin and at the moment Putin doesn't seem to be backing down now this story alone is exposing 
hashtag the globalist movement and how other countries are maneuvering around it. That's why story number six almost made it to the top two this week. Big, big head. Story number seven in the top two international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Whew, almost there. <sighs> Analyzing America's health care strategy. This is a big headline. Almost made it to the top. The Affordable Care Act is back in the headlines. One headline focusing on the enrollment factor made news because the data is showing that people are signing up for these programs and the website has played a huge part in that. Now, there are a lot of good testimonies when it comes to Obamacare actually making news. Now, there are also some bad ones and some good ones. Now, new data is coming in, especially during the COVID-19 crunch. The pendulum is shifting in this story because the amount of poor people seems to be increasing, causing people to look for a better health care plan. Now, one NPR headline is focusing on billions of people who could lose their Medicaid benefits once the pandemic health emergency ends. Now, the qualification seems to be what's causing the problems because if people earn less, they, 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 can't, they qualify, but if they earn more, they don't qualify for some of these programs now this alone has people backing away from earning more which is not good more money which is not good so they're trying to protect their benefits now one fox news article says that the national nursing shortage is hitting rural america the hardest one article in the atlantic sums up america's doctor shortage saying that it's a problem now this these are not good signs for america's health care strategy and that's why story number seven made it to the top two this week Big, big, big headline. Story number eight at the top international headline and developing news story that I made it this week. For you. Story number eight, big, big headline. Measuring the president on President's Day, folks. Biden's poll numbers are not looking that promising since being elected. The current president still faces growing racial tensions in the mainstream news, escalating crime against public officials, poverty rates that continue to rise with price with prices also rising, and the number of people depending on the government is also increasing daily. Student loan borrowers are also making headlines because they want to break. Although the economy is showing a little bit of signs of life. There is still growing uncertainty in the markets. Employers are having a hard time getting a hold of workers and they're trying to gain that worker confidence back. Uh, when, do it, when doing a morale check, you may also hear some mixed opinions. People just don't feel optimistic. Foreign affairs stories have also been constantly making headlines, leaving officials and diplomats on the edge of their seats. Now, when measuring the president, or well, the measuring, measuring the president on President's Day, it may be very, very hard to uh, to push a passing grade on this president with so much uncertainty still making headlines. COVID-19 is not making it any easier for this president. And that's why story number eight made it to the top international headline this week around President's Day, folks. Well, those are our top eight local and international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. I hope you got something on today's program. I always get something on doing the research. As usual, I like to thank all the news outlets, the media, the, PD, the people on the front line. You deserve all the credit, the journalists. I'm just the media, the man in the middle. If you want to show some support here at Methane, it does not take much. All you have to do is visit the website on the screen, buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor the program, folks. Well, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I am out of here. I'm going to look through over 200 or more stories to come back next week to give you top eight stories, folks. Well, that's it. I'm out of here. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you for tuning to the media. It was me, Brian West. Have a good week, everybody. Peace. Have no fear, fellow citizens.